Space is the final frontier, but it's so expensive to simply get up there that our ability to explore it has been severely hampered. For this reason, governments and companies around the world are trying to figure out cheaper ways to transport people and goods into space. One such idea that's been floating around for a while is the space elevator. So what if we built one? Hello and welcome to What If Geography, where we try and answer the great geographic what-if questions of the world. I'm your host, Jeff Gibson, and today we're talking about space. Sort of. What we're really talking about is the theoretical concept of the space elevator. And more to that point, what are the geographic ramifications of building such a world-defining megaproject? The concept of a space elevator is not new. In fact, the idea originally sprung from Russian scientist Konstantin Tsiolkovsky back in the late 1800s after he visited the recently constructed Eiffel Tower in Paris. Of course, what Konstantin imagined was really more like a really tall building that stretched about 36,000 kilometers into space. Not very practical, but the core idea was there. Fast forward a century or so, and we're now at the point of time where blasting off into space is a regular occurrence, relatively speaking. Today, there are multiple countries such as the United States, China, European Union, India, and Russia that have agencies responsible for getting things into orbit around Earth or even deeper into the solar system. On top of that, there are now multiple corporations aiming to do the very same thing. SpaceX, Blue Origin, Virgin Galactic, and many more either have currently operational spacefaring rockets or will in the near future. But while all of these countries, agencies, and corporations are all dedicated to getting things into space as cheaply and efficiently as possible, they all struggle with the same problem. Rockets are very expensive. As it turns out, working against the natural gravitational pull of Earth requires an incredible amount of energy. Enter the space elevator. A space elevator is almost exactly how it sounds. An elevator into space. The core concept is very much the same as an elevator within a building. You have a cable strung from the bottom to the top. And then you use a small amount of energy, combined with natural gravitational and physical forces, to move the elevator up or down. This works very well and very efficiently within the context of a building, and in theory, it could work just as efficiently getting things into space. Of course, once you start talking about space, everything gets far more complicated and technologically challenging, even for something as simple as an elevator. For this reason, a space elevator has not yet been built. The core technologies around what the cable would even be made out of does not yet exist. Now, I'm not an astrophysicist. The technologies that would be even needed to create such a mega project, let alone the science behind it, escape me. I'm a geographer, and what I'm interested in is, how would this kind of project affect the world that we know today? Where would a space elevator be built? And what are the geographic ramifications of building it? But before we launch into these geographic quandaries, if you're enjoying this video, now would be a great time to subscribe. More fun geography videos are just one click away. Humans have been going into space for over 50 years. During this time, we have been strapping ourselves to thousands of gallons of fuel and literally blasting ourselves into space, fighting against the natural gravitational pull of the Earth the entire way. As you can imagine, it's a very inefficient process. For one, it's very expensive. Depending on the destination, a launch can be as cheap as $100 million, but that can rapidly increase to billions of dollars. This is relatively fine for government agencies as they have budgets that exist in some form outside the need to generate profits. But for the rapidly growing commercial space industry, these kinds of costs are prohibitive. But perhaps the bigger issue isn't the hit to the pocketbook, but rather the cost to the environment. At present, each rocket launch into space emits somewhere between 50 to 75 tons of carbon dioxide per passenger. To put this in perspective, the average passenger on a commercial airliner emits about 1 to 3 tons of carbon dioxide. Of course, on any given year, there's somewhere between 100 and 200 space launches. So the total amount of emissions created by the space industry is basically nothing compared to the 100,000 airplane flights every single day. But space travel is expected to grow rapidly. And with that growth will be an increase in climate change inducing emissions caused by our current rocket method of transportation. For this reason, a space elevator is seen not only as a way to get materials and people into space at a very low cost, but also with a very small amount of energy. This, of course, doesn't include the energy it takes to get people and materials to the space elevator here on Earth. That cost will largely depend on where the space elevator is built. Building a space elevator is not only a process in technology, but also one in logistics. After all, if you're anticipating the elevator hauling many more people and goods than rockets do today, then you'll also need it to be relatively easy to access. And unfortunately, 
there are only a few places where a space elevator could realistically be built. Because the space elevator is essentially a tether that will swing around the planet along with the Earth's natural rotation, we already know that any space elevator built would need to be placed somewhere along the equator, or at least relatively near to it. If it was placed anywhere else, say within the United States proper, it would swing against the natural force of the Earth, which would cause problems for how the elevator would function. But along the equator, there are a number of places it could theoretically work. The places most commonly theorized are in the mountains near Quito, Ecuador, in the mountains near Nairobi, Kenya, or on a floating platform somewhere along the equator in the ocean likely south of Hawaii or west of Indonesia. A floating platform is actually the most preferred from the scientific community because it's anticipated that a space elevator platform would need to be moved occasionally to avoid debris and other objects in space. Of course, none of the benefits of a space elevator make sense if it's prohibitively expensive to build, especially for an industry that's rapidly concerned with making a profit. But while it's easy to assume the costs would be astronomical, it's actually more in line with other mega infrastructure projects here on Earth. In fact, current cost estimates put it at far less money than some mega projects underway right now, such as the California High Speed Rail Project. In 2004, a scientist from the European Space Agency co-authored a paper breaking down the estimated costs of a theoretical space elevator. In it, they estimate that a space elevator could cost as little as $6.2 billion up to about $12 billion. That's not cheap, of course, but for a country like the United States, it's a literal drop in the bucket. What is prohibitive, however, and unfortunately, is the technology. Like any elevator, the space elevator would use a cable to pull things up into space or let them descend back to Earth. Today's technology around materials would not survive in the atmosphere for an extended period of time. There are some theories that advances in carbon nanotubes could provide that enduring material in the future, but that's still just a theory. That said, if the material aspect of the space elevator could be figured out, it would open up a literal world of possibilities. Building a space elevator would impact the world in a way that hasn't really been done since the invention of nuclear fission and the nuclear bomb. Current space travel is prohibitively expensive for ordinary people and even most governments to participate in. That's not to suggest the space elevator would immediately open up space exploration for everyday people, but it would spur a level of growth in space exploration and construction in a way that we have yet to fully understand. But in terms of Earth itself, a space elevator would have a monumental impact on wherever it's eventually built. If it's built in either Ecuador or Kenya, the amount of investment and resources that would flow into those two countries would define its development for generations to come. Not only would investment pour into the countries for infrastructure, but also in terms of tourism. Any country that builds the first space elevator is bound to have a surge in tourism from people who want to see it, much in the same way the Kennedy Space Center has been for Florida. Similarly, if a platform was built in the ocean, additional infrastructure would be needed out there as well. A space elevator would require full-time staff, and that means getting people to live there on a full-time basis. In fact, it's not too difficult to imagine a permanent sort of city being built somewhere relatively close to facilitate this kind of logistical support. Regardless of where it's ultimately built, a space elevator would be a world-defining moment for the planet, in much the same way as atomic energy, the printing press, and the internet have been in the past. The space elevator is still just an unrealized theory but one perhaps not as far-fetched as you might imagine. Regardless if one is ever actually built, the reality is that our current spacefaring endeavors are not a long-term sustainable solution. For the world to better facilitate space exploration, more down-to-earth solutions will be needed. I hope you enjoyed learning about some of the geographic implications of the space elevator. If you did, please subscribe to my channel. You can do that right here. And if you want to watch more of my videos, you can do so right here. Thanks for watching. See you next time.